Welcome to our show on TV 99 North Mississippi from the heart. We tell stories of people because people are interesting. Today I have a guest with me, Miss Marta Bowling, and she's going to be talking to us about um, her home country, Puerto Rico. Yes ma'am. Welcome. Thank you so much. Um, when did you come to the United States? Uh, well, I mean, I came from Puerto Rico in 1975. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to come to the United States to go to school. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother wanted me to come to a secure place, and she found Blue Mountain College. And when I got there, I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm not staying here. I come from the city, from San Juan, Puerto Rico. And I said, what is this? You know, Drop this in is, the middle of nowhere. Yeah, this is like two streets, 500 people. I, what is this? Mm -hmm. But I have to say that that was the best years of my life. I did finish my bachelor's degree there. Mm -hmm. And then I went on to Ole Miss and did my master's degree. Graduated in 1981 and went back to Puerto Rico. Uh, I worked in Puerto Rico for 28 years in the government. My area of specialty is early childhood education. And so I, I just dedicated my life to working to children. I love them, I still do. Yeah. Uh, and then all of a sudden my life totally changed. How's that? Well, uh, I came for a class reunion mm -hmm. that I haven't been back here in Lord knows 15 or 20 years. Mm -hmm. Never thought I would come back again. And my life changed. I got in touch with all these friends again and family, I mean, friends that became family to me. And I got married. Oh well, that is so, life changing. <laughs> very life changing, yeah. Uh, I never thought I would marry again. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, never in my life would I thought I would come to Mississippi. Right. And I said, well Lord, you know what? Uh, this is not going to work mm -hmm. because I'm still working. This is very far away. If you want this to work, just open doors. Well, the rest is history. I've been married seven years happily married with this wonderful man. Mm -hmm. What's your husband's name? Bill Bolin. And uh, it's funny because, uh, well, not funny, but I think it's special because my family has passed away. And God has provided me this wonderful family that I knew when I was 16 because right. Bill's, Bill's uh, sister was is my best friend from college. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I live here. Uh, I started to travel back and forth because I couldn't retire for a while. And then finally, they had an early retirement, and there I went. So I retired, and I've been here, actually like living full time, like five years. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my mother came to live with me. She passed away three years ago. And uh, I'm just dedicating here my life to work for the Lord and to work for children. Well, nice. Let's go back to Puerto Rico mm -hmm. for a moment. Tell us about when you were born. What was it like there I was, when you were really, really young? Uh, Puerto Rico is a, it's a wonderful island. There's, uh, average temperature is 82 degrees. Uh, you can access the ocean anytime. We are a very small island, 100 by 35. So you can go around the island in a day. <laughs> we have the mountains and the beach. And we have, uh, people are very warm, loving. We love to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, I have wonderful memories of my childhood with my family, which I miss a lot, you know, right. and, uh, and just uh, passionate. We're, I would describe us like coconut water, passion fruit, blues <laughs> and reds and oranges, and yeah. just passionate. That's right. what I would say. That <laughs> what was one of the favorite foods you had when you were growing up? Oh, mofongo. Mofongo. Mofongo is, uh, uh, you'll see green plantains in the stores here, right. they're a big banana. People think they're bananas, but they're called plantains. And uh, you do that, you fry that, you smash them and refry them again, and then you take uh, and make like a little ball out of it, and you have that with soup, with meat, whatever. I love that. Uh, oh. we, we love rice, mm -hmm. uh, so like potatoes is here in the south, in Puerto Rico is rice. So you have rice in every meal with name it anything you want to. You can have rice chicken with rice, you can have it with octopus, you can have it white, green, I mean, name it. Uh, octopus. Yes. <laughs> yes, you can have a, Hey, I eat calamari, I can't say Oh, I love But well, let me tell you, we make a black rice with the calamari. Yeah. You know, they sell it in can, you know, they have a, a black ink. 
Hmm. And so your rice turns out to be black, and it's absolutely delicious. Wow. It really is. You never would think you could eat the ink of a calamari. Yeah, it's great. Or octopus, whatever. Uh, we, we make rice with everything. My husband has learned to mm -hmm. love rice. Uh, well, that's good. <laughs> you probably wouldn't have much yeah. to eat. Huh? We have wonderful coffee. Yeah. Uh, our coffee is very strong. So that's one of the things that I had to adjust. Um, uh, the brown water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the brown water. Uh, I had to adjust to that, and I, I have a funny story. When I joined uh, Salem United Methodist Church, uh, I was there, and all the, the walls were white. And uh, I said, you know, I'm going to paint... I'm going to paint inside the rooms, the Sunday school rooms. So I went and got a color that we will be in the tropics, you know, use like uh, aqua. Well, everybody didn't say a thing, but they were like, <laughs> you know, well, my house in Puerto Rico are, are yellows and blues and seafoam. <clears throat> uh, mm -hmm. And here the colors are totally different. So uh, is your house seafoam and it aqua? Was, and it was when I first came. Yeah. Yes. I live in a log house. Uh, and I, yes, ma'am, I had blues and lavenders and stuff like that. Now I toned it down a little bit. I am I'm kind of grayish now. Uh, <laughs> That's kind of sad. Yeah, but yeah. That, but the rest, like everything else, the accents of the house mm -hmm. is color. Mm -hmm. It's color. I have to have color. Right. Uh, so because we're from the tropics. So right. every, you have flowers and everything every time. So, um, pineapples. Mm -hmm. We Y'all have, have some awesome pineapples. Yes. I think some of the best pineapples I've ever tasted were from Puerto Rico. Yes, we do oh. have wonderful pineapples. Uh, it's We have wonderful pineapples, wonderful coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, there's several coffees, and of course, uh, there's, and I hate to say it, but the rum is also good. <laughs> <laughs> the Bacardi yeah. is from Puerto Rico. Oh, okay. Bacardi is from Puerto Rico. Um, I, I had a chance to visit there one time, really? and I, but I didn't get to tour the island because, you know, it's just a cruise stop. Uh -huh. But I remember there was a fort on one end of the island. El Morro. Do you know the story behind that? Yes. What that, it? uh, that, that fort, it's in the old San Juan. Uh, San Juan is our capital, and it's divided into old San Juan and modern San Juan. Mm -hmm. So the old San Juan, it's, it's where the fort is at. It's, uh, it was built by the Spaniards. So Puerto Ricans, we are a mixture of Spaniards, uh, Blacks, mm -hmm. and uh, Indians. But Indians, not like native Indians. Mm -hmm. Our Indians were Tainos. So you go to Puerto Rico, you'll see that there's people that are darker skinned, green eyes, tall, short. I mean, we're a mixture of of everything. Right. So this this particular fortress was built to protect the city. So you go to El Morro and it's uh, the walls. It has a wall that protects the old San Juan completely. Mm -hmm. The Spaniards built that in order that when the pirates came, they will see who was coming in and they couldn't come into the city. Actually, it had a door and it, it's still there, the door, and it's called the door of San Juan and they will close that door and nobody could come into the city. So uh, where our governor lives, mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, I think it's the oldest building from that era that are still people living in it. He lives in that house. Wow. And uh, it's called La Fortaleza. And uh, it's very interesting because uh, at that time, I worked there for a while, and uh, anyway, one time uh, I started reviewing uh, something about the flax they put up at mm -hmm. this place. So every time a ship came in from a different country, they would raise the flag of that country. So uh, it was very interesting uh, just to learn the history behind all these things. Mm -hmm. uh, so El Morro is still there. You can tour it. It's beautiful. Uh, it's just a, it's, it's incredible, the views and the things there. All San Juan, all in itself, mm -hmm. it's very pretty. It's very pretty. So what's the dividing line between Old San Juan and New San Juan? A bridge. <laughs> uh, actually, well, uh, what is... Is there a moat around Old San Juan or something? Yeah, really? it's just a piece of... Uh, it's connected. It's a little island off the island. And oh. so it's connected by the bridge, literally. Uh, wow. Yes, it is. Uh, but you know that... Uh, I, don't, I imagine you do know that there was a devastating hurricane. Yes. Uh, September 20th, 
changed the life of all Puerto Ricans. Uh, we had Hurricane Maria, mm -hmm. and it was a Category 5 hurricane. And uh, there were sustained winds of 175 miles per hour. Uh, so our island has been devastated. Uh, the hurricane cross, crossed Puerto Rico like diagonally. So since we are a small island, 100 by 35, you know what that means, it covered the whole island. Oh, yeah. You know, so it came from east and going out northwest. So there are 3.5 Puerto Rican living in the island. We are American citizens. Right. Uh, it's uh, those 3.5 million Puerto Rican for this is the 70 something day that are we are without electricity. Mm -hmm. uh, our total electricity system collapsed. Communication collapsed, no cell phones, Wi-Fi, nothing. Uh, there was not enough gas. There was, uh, since we're in an island, everything mm -hmm. has to come through boats right. or through, through you know, airplanes. So it has been very sad, all the beautiful things that you can think of, think of a tropical island, like mm -hmm. a rainforest. We have a rainforest that it's called El Junque. Well, it's, what does that mean? It's a, it's a, El Junque is a Taino word, it's an Indian word, and it was one of their gods. How? Oh. Uh, anyhow, uh, El Junque, there's a legend that said that it was there and strong to fight the hurricanes. And we oh. have had a lot of hurricanes that when they hit that mountains, they go back. But this one, that didn't work. Uh, it peeled completely everything. Really? Yes. Uh, the highland, uh, the, uh, the inland, like the mountains, mm -hmm. were very, 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 very much uh, devastated. We had over 30 something inches of rain in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So the floods, uh, there had been a lot of people that had passed away after the hurricane because of the situation of not having electricity, so people that were in life support systems, the hospitals collapsed. I mean, mm -hmm. it has been terrible. Of course, this was September 20th. We're up right now in November, so it's been almost, you know, two months and, and a half probably. And uh, things are getting better. There's a more communication. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think there's about, if I'm not mistaken, uh, only 35% of the island has electricity still. But they've cleared the runways and they've cleared the harbors yeah. and stuff. So yes, so that's they can working. They start receiving all that. That's working. Uh, the post office was closed mm -hmm. for over three weeks. So, uh, like, I have family there. My family's there. Mm -hmm. So uh, they couldn't find food. Uh, everything was closed because, you know, there was no way. And then the food was ruined, anything, all the meat and all that stuff. Right. So we started sending boxes to them and a full of food and several churches in the community have helped. That's a great um, idea. Uh, uh, my church, of <clears> course, <throat> and mm -hmm. our Salem United Methodist Church and our, the West Union Church of the United Methodist Church have mm -hmm. helped. And uh, also, I have to say that Pleasantdale Baptist Church uh, from Thaxton also has mm -hmm. sent my family boxes. So you take a, one of those flat rate boxes, you know, it could be thirteen ninety five or nineteen ninety five. there's two sizes. And you can just put in there canned foods, uh, batteries or uh, water, even drinks. Uh, I even send my family puzzles. The, the nights are very long. Oh, I imagine. Uh, what to do. Uh, so uh, we have sent over 40 something uh, boxes to the family. And also, two weeks ago, we had a benefit. We had a spaghetti dinner mm -hmm. uh, to help Puerto Rico at the church. and. We were very pleased because everyone was so supportive to my family. And so um, helping them get food and also helping them reconstruct their houses. Right. So it's, it's mm. very sad. It is. Uh, we don't, one of the things that us Puerto Rican are worried is that people think that everything is okay already. No, it's not okay in Puerto Rico. They still need help. They need a lot of help. Right. Hmm. That is sad. But can I take you back just a little bit? Oh, yeah. Um, I just didn't want this to No, no. I <laughs> Without understand. saying this. Yes, mm -hmm. I understand. Um, 
when you were growing up, where was your favorite place to go, hang out? The beach. The beach. There's a, there's a place in Puerto Rico called Boquerón, and it's in the southwest part of the island. So if you ever go to Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. uh, the most beautiful beaches are on the south and in the west side because that is the Caribbean Sea. So the Caribbean Sea is more Is that peaceful. the green waters that yeah, you can that see through thing. and all that? And there's yeah. a particular place on the west south or the southwest corner of the island, like this little spot right here, uh, that they have a lighthouse. Mm. And I love that place because you stand there and it's like the edge of Puerto Rico and you see this ocean completely blue as, and you know, you can see this thing, the map, you mm -hmm. know, like the end of Puerto Rico there, and my hair standing up, uh, it's my favorite place. Yeah. And then there is a, a beach there, and it's called Dirty Bay, but it's nothing dirty. Dirty Bay? Why is it called that? Well, I really don't know why, but it's, called, it's nothing dirty because it's like crystal blue. Right. But uh, anyway, uh, that's one of the ten top beaches in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not been taken over by resorts, it's still open no, and free? It's free. It's wow. beautiful. You have to leave your car at a certain spot and then walk. And uh, you can spend the day there. Right. Uh, that, that area of the southwest mm -hmm. is very beautiful. It has a lot of beautiful beaches and it's just incredible. So I'm, I'm, one of the things, if you ask me, what do you miss the most? Right. Okay. Well, of course, my family. But uh, I would say the ocean. Uh, I have to see the ocean. I tell my husband, we got to go to the beach. Right. Because I'm, I'm, I'm just an island girl. Right. So just, I, we live, my husband and I live in a beautiful place in Edda, in the countryside. But there's trees and trees and trees and trees and trees and more <laughs> trees. <laughs> And that's fine, <laughs> but this island girl needs the ocean and the sun. So uh, this body's not used to all this winter and cold weather. <laughs> right. I can imagine 82 degrees every day. Yes, yes. It's, it's a beautiful place. I mm -hmm. would encourage everybody to go to Puerto Rico and to that area, to the Caribbean. It's just so beautiful. Right. Um, what was it like going to school in Puerto Rico? Oh, well, I, school is interesting. We take English and Spanish since we're in the kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Kindergarten, every kid has to go to kindergarten. It's compuls compulsory. Mm -hmm. My first language is not English, as yeah. you can tell. <laughs> uh, so everybody has to take uh, English. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that everybody knows English, you know. But uh, it's a requirement. It's a requirement for the children. School is fun. Uh, of course, uh, it's basically about the same as here. But we have that, that we have to take since kindergarten all the way to high school and university, you have to take English. So that, in my case particularly, mm -hmm. uh, has been a benefit. And I will encourage young people to learn a second language. I work for the government, mm -hmm. and one of the things that opened my doors professionally was to know English. So I will go come to the States and negotiate funds for my island. Right. Uh, and get, and you know, I had to work with the federal government, so I had to speak English. So s since I went to school here, I knew how to write and speak, and you know, with my accent. And they said I had a cute Southern Puerto Rican accent. Uh, <laughs> and anyway, that opened a lot of doors. Right. So uh, I encourage everybody. Actually, I teach Spanish at our church. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. I teach Spanish at our church because I see a great necessity here. Uh, uh, I see a lot of people struggling that they don't know English or people that know English and don't know Spanish and uh, they're in need mm -hmm. of understanding each other. So we open this class and I give it on Thursdays at our church, our Salem, mm -hmm. and uh, I have, uh, the group has reduced because people get scared. But we've been doing this for a year and the people that are there are teachers, nurses, Mm -hmm. Okay, Pam Bowman, the Union Co County Coroner, mm -hmm. she is taking Spanish because she, she comes and she's improved a lot. She's doing really good. Okay. And uh, we, we kid around about Los Muertos, the people, but you know, she has mm -hmm. to deal with that. And she, 
works with Latinos and uh, anyway she needs a Spanish and nurses do too. They do. So uh, that has been a wonderful experience to okay. me. And, and this is at Salem United Methodist Church out of Etta. Yes ma'am. On State Road 355 if you're interested. Yes and we do it every other Thursday at 530 to 7 and we mm -hmm. have a wonderful time. We laugh a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, they laugh at me and I laugh at them. They say that I say things differently, and I say, no, it's you that are saying it upside down. It's not me, it's you. So we have a wonderful time. It's really good. It's really good. Cool. So if you want to learn Spanish, come see us. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very good idea. Um, did you graduate high school at 16? You said you came to Blue Mountain at 16. Yes, I did. Uh, my mama put me in school when I was four years old at that time. I'm, I'm going to be 60, so it's been a while. Uh, <laughs> It, you know, she could do it, and so I graduated. I was 16 when I came. I was, uh, I knew English, but I wasn't very fluent in, you know, in, in my English. Right. I remember when I came to Blue Mountain College, uh, I would sit there and do my homework, and my roommates, after I went to sleep, will go and redo it for me, my English, and verify it. Uh, I, take, I took a psychology course with Dr. Shirley and he's not a professor anymore at Blue Mountain College, but I remember sitting there and I said, oh my gosh, what did this man say? I don't know what he said. I don't understand. He had a very, like a German accent, you know, uh -huh. and I couldn't understand. Uh, so that first semester was very hard. Imagine. Uh, I was the only, at that time, we're talking in 75, so at that time I was the only Latino in, uh, at Blue Mountain College. Nobody else spoke Spanish. So if I ran out of words and I couldn't say the word, I would say mm -hmm. Berber, and they knew there was a word missing there, and they would start saying words, and I said, that's it, that's it, okay. You would say what? Berber. Berber? What does Berber mean? <laughs> Nothing. That is what I didn't know. <laughs> so it was lots of fun. Uh, Blue Mountains, and I love Blue Mountain College. It's still a great school It today. is, and I participate of a lot of alumni things there, and it's, uh, uh, they were so warm. Uh, to me and and so loving and, mm -hmm. and it was just I I tell you those were the best what part of what I am mm -hmm. is because of that place uh, and I'm glad my mother at the end brought me there and she was the one that planned all this see God right. has a divine plan for everybody but she started this with God mm -hmm. and look what I ended up with this wonderful husband here serving the Lord mm -hmm. I mean what else can you ask for that's right amen Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you. This has been so it. much fun. <laughs> and people, please remember that um, Puerto Rico still needs our prayers and our financial help. Um, and if you want to learn how to send something to them, just get in touch with Miss Marta and she'll help you. Well, how can they get in contact with you? Oh, uh, well, there's our Salem Facebook page. It's Salem United Methodist Church. You can go to Facebook and find us. And, um, I run that page, so uh, okay. you can get in touch through us there. Or like I said, my number is 534-2635. Okay, great. Thank you so much for joining us today here on TV 99 North Mississippi.